my name is Hugo Leveille. I'm currently head of compositing at Mail Studio Montreal, Canada and also serving as a VFX supervisor and I'm also doing some online training uh, on website like FX PhD. So my first experience uh, in the VFX world was in 2002 where I started to do my own personal project in Adobe After Effects so that was my uh, first experience where I completely fell in love with the VFX world. So as time went by I started to get more serious and then learn Apple Shake which was, which was the default and uh, most used node-based uh, node compositing application. So about 2005 I just uh, stopped to work completely and took a quick class on uh, Apple Shake so that I could really learn the software and build a reel so that I could uh, start to work professionally in the VFX world. So in 2006 that's where I had my first uh, chance to work on a feature film so in my first job I had the chance to work on the Frank Miller's uh, movie 300 so that was my first experience uh, in compositing and about a year later in 2007 that's where I moved to Mel's where I started as a junior compositor and since the team was really small at the time I also started to gain interest in Python programming so I could start to build my own pipeline tool since there was almost no pipeline uh, in place so uh, since the team was really small I had to build my own tool so that we could have a more efficient pipeline at, uh, at the time so that was uh, uh, in 2007, 2008, and then I, as time went by, I started to move up in the company. So I started to have more responsibility in uh, managing some project, uh, doing some compositing supervision, the compositing. And uh, so, yeah, today I'm now head of compositing, managing the old compositing team, making sure that. Uh, Everyone is on the same page that all technology are spreading to the floor and managing all the resources uh, through all the different projects. So the decision to work in the VFX industry came a bit late in my life at around age 26. So before that I was working in a steel shop factory where I was doing some work that I just completely hated. I was looking at the clock every minute to see if the day was ending so I could get back home and work on my personal VFX project. So I've been working uh, there for um, until age 26 where I just decided that if I'm going to work for the next 30-40 years I better be working on something I love to do. So that's where I made the decision to just stop everything and spend, uh, be full time uh, learning the software uh, and building a reel so I can get my, I could get my first job and start to work in the VFX industry. So even though I wish I had made this decision earlier to switch to the VFX industry, now I'm kind of grateful for it because I know that even though sometimes the, the, the VFX work is complicated and stressful. When I put that in comparison to what I was doing before, which was something I just hated, now I, I know that at the end of the day I'm doing something I just love. So I cannot complain and when I see some people that get bored or are just complaining about their work, I know that it could be a lot worse. So I'm really grateful that I have this um, I uh, can put that in perspective and know that I'm actually very, very uh, lucky to be doing something that I just love to do every day. So an important thing to be stable in this uh, industry is to always leave a good impression in the place that we're working because you're always going to be as good as your last job and since this is a very small world where uh, everyone is knowing each other. It's really important that you uh, start in the industry by having a good name that if you want to move from one place to the other, you'll ha have a, a very easy time to have recommendation to enter in your new job. 
And one other thing that is really important when you'll be making the decision to where you want to work is to decide in which kind of project that you want to work so that you know that you'll have a good fit to the place you'll be working because you have uh, VFX house where they're working on smaller projects, others are working on the big uh, VFX movie. So you'll have to decide if you're more a fit for the smaller one that maybe you're not, it's more as uh, glamour as the big one, but sometimes you'll have a longer contract because they have smaller team and they, they'll be keeping their staff a bit longer, unlike the big VFX studio where you're working on the biggest film, but since they have huge team and it's uh, shrinking with depending on the type of project that they have, so sometimes in those biggest uh, house you'll be working yeah on the biggest movie but at the end of a few months maybe they'll just let go everyone in the team so if you're wor uh, looking for a more stable uh, uh, workplace that's maybe not a fit for you maybe the smallest studio will be a best fit for you and actually i think it's the uh those kind of place are uh better place to start your career so you'll have smaller team and they have more time to show you the stuff so that's an important aspect to decide where you want to work and depending of your life lifestyle and how stable you want to be in terms of your work so obviously the biggest change that i think is going to happen in terms of compositing in the upcoming years is going to be everything that is uh, related to uh, machine learning and ai stuff so we're already we're starting to see some very convincing thing happening with ai like uh, face replacement there's also a lot of plugins that are getting generated to generate some roto and we see that even with uh, a smartphone now we're starting to see some face replacement and also auto tracking just by moving the phone so i think that in the upcoming years a lot of work that is currently done by uh, artists like tracking and rotoscoping stuff like that a lot of cleanup and i really think that it's going to remove a lot of job for the artists that are currently doing those kind of tasks because i think that we're uh, a few months or years of being able to do stuff that currently artists are taking hours and days to generate an effect that now the machine is almost doing in real time so I think that is going to be a big game changer in terms of what will be the workload of artists uh, being passed to the uh, machine Okay, so if I can give you five tips to be successful in the compositing industry, the first one would be to never stop to learn because I think that's when you are learning new thing and new technique, that's what is going to keep you motivated to do your work. So there's always something new to, to learn, a different approach to do the same kind of task. So I think that one important aspect is to always look for what's new so that you know how to handle the problem differently and have more than uh, one tool in your toolbox. Tips number two would be to never stop to share your knowledge with the other because everything that you've learned you probably took it from someone else who took the time to show show you the all the trick that you know now so I think it's really important to pass the information to your uh, the new one that come in the industry and that's very important and that's how I think you will gain respect from your teammate by taking the time to show them what you have learned on your side so that's how you gain uh, respect from uh, your teammates tip number three is to make sure that you're having fun doing the job that you're doing because yeah it's a job but at the end of the day if you're getting home feeling depressed or anxious about your uh, what you're doing I think that there's something wrong uh, with what you're doing so always make sure that you're uh, in a place that will allow you to uh, do the work that you have to do but in a friendly and uh, fun environment where you'll uh, have a good time doing your uh, day job Tips number four would be to always make sure to challenge yourself at some point and put you out of your comfort zone because that's how I think you're going to evolve 
and gain experience in terms of artists and the kind of work that you'll be able to do because if you're always doing the same kind of task over and over again that's not how you're going to uh, evolve and gain experience in terms of your daily work I think that it's really important at some point to do stuff that you've never done before and that's how you you'll be able to gain experience and that you'll be uh, getting better and better at what you're doing. Tips number five, buy yourself a digital camera and play with it. Because at the end of the day, the work that we're doing is rendering an image that was shot with a camera and mimic everything that a real camera would be doing. So by Exploring stuff with a digital, cam digital camera, you'll know what, uh, how lens is reacting, how the aberration is happening in a lens, the lens distortion, how the shutter speed is affecting the final image, what, how the focal length also is affecting the uh, vanishing point of your image. So by having the, ex uh, the experience with a camera, you'll exercise also your eye and see what's working in an image and what is not working with what is not working in the image so i think that one at some point in my life what how i really gained uh, experience and and had a better eye of finding what was wrong in the image was when i really started to do some photography to really explore and really understand the uh, aspect of the camera and what is making an image work or not